In this video, I want to go through and start working on our actual inventory for the shop system. So I want to share this inventory inside of our UI, but make it so it's offset kind of to the right. So when I hit play and open the inventory, I want it to, our inventory to be kind of over here. However, I want the shop inventory, if we're using a shop, to appear in this area, you know, obviously over here. So we need to kind of set up some sort of way to show and hide it. However, the first thing we also want to do is move this over. So if we open up our inventory widget, we can see we're anchored to the center with all three of our items here. So we want to move off to the right. So let's try like 0 0.7. No, negative 0 0.7. And that brings it over a good bit. So let's do that. For both of these and we'll move the close button over to kind of wherever we see fit so just straight over not sure why there we go i guess just negative eight works for that all righty let's see what that looks like probably going to go over a good bit with the image yes we do we need to drag that over a tiny bit. We went a little far by lining it up to this corner. And we got to go just a little farther and then up. There we go. So we have it pretty well aligned, close enough anyways. So I'd say we're good to go. And let's do a save all. And now, oh, we already showed you where to, uh, yeah. So pick up items. We're still good to go. Okay. So we have that set up. Now I want to also add onto that the actual shop inventory as well. So I essentially want to have two inventories, so to speak, but one being hidden while the other is, well, not, what do I say, like, not hidden. So, like, when we open up a shop, I want that inventory widget of the shop to be visible. But when we view our own inventory, I want it to be hidden so we can't, you know, do anything with it. So we need to kind of figure out how we can add two inventories together, so to speak. So let's see. Currently, we're going through and we're creating one widget. And then we add it to the widget switcher. However, that will work for a single child. But if we want to add multiple things, we can't really do that. So what I'm thinking is we create one, we attach two into that shop widget wherever we please. And that's kind of the route we take. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new widget. This one's going to be Debbie underscore. Let's do, uh, let's leave it like that for a second. And let's, we want to rename this one to inventory, eh, no. Let's see, what would be a good name? I can't think of one, so let's just name this one shop inventory. We're going to open that on up. And we are going to grab two of our inventory widgets. So there's one. Get that onto the center. Not sure why the... That's set up like that. Oh yeah, that's right, because I have it offset. And then I want to add in another. And anchor that to the center as well. But I want to move it over. So we're just going to drag it on the X. And move it straight to the other side like so. Okay, now let's go back to our UI. And instead... We are going to spawn a shop inventory and add that result to the widget interface instead. Now that way we can just kind of see what it looks like. So we press I, and here we have our own, and this over here would be our shop. So let's rename these. So this one over here on the left side is going to be the shop inventory right there. I'll save, and that's the route I want to take. So in our UI, 
we're going to remove our actual inventory there. And we're going to grab the w underscore inventory variable and name it w underscore shop. Or sorry, not rename, but we're going to set the variable type as the shop. And we're going to set it like so and add it to the widget switcher. That way, hopefully, that goes through and works as, well, the same one did before. Now we just have to make sure we set the parent. So we're going to kind of mimic this as close as possible. So if we head to the graph, as you can see, we have the parent widget. And then we have all these functions in here that we're going to have to kind of go through to add to a specific one. So with the parent, we need to make sure we set that. So that's going to be instance editable. And we're going to expose it on spawn. And it's going to be our UI as the type. So let's add a new variable. Let's call it parent. It's going to be w underscore UI object reference, instance editable, and expose it on spawn. Now let's refresh this node where we create it and attach the parent to self. So once we have that, we go to our shop inventory, or let me rephrase that. Uh, now I'm trying to think, what was I going to say? My brain quit working. We want to get rid of the close buttons and have just one close in the center. But let's see what happens when we pick up an item. We get a crash because we're accessing pretty much an area that doesn't exist. So let's see if it even shows us where it may happen. So that crash happened inside of the widget. And everything that's generated it caused the issue. So let's reload it again. Alrighty, let's relaunch the uh, assets. And if we look at our inventory, go to the graph, we have some basic, you know, functions. So we have add item. So obviously that's going to go through and add items. We also have fill default, which is again, going to run by default. So that doesn't matter. We have our update and should add new blah, 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 remove item, and then just our event graph. So that's all going to run, you know, as it should. However, we don't have access to the parent. So the parent in this case, when we click close, it's going to be a null pointer. So we really don't need the parent or the close button in there. Instead, we want to have the close button in here. So that, again, makes a little more sense. We'll do that later. But what we want to do is we want to get the add item working first. So that's going to be kind of our priority. So let's go to our shop inventory, go to the graph. Let's create a new function. Let's call it add item. And let's add a Boolean as a parameter. And let's call it add to self. And this one's going to be a simple switch, or sorry, branch. And if we want to add it to ourself, we add it to this guy's inventory. So we get our own inventory. And we do add item for true. And otherwise, let me move this up. We grab the shop's inventory. And we do add item to it instead. So that way they kind of work together, if that makes sense. So now we just need to pass in the actual item itself. So the item type is the item data structure. So let's do item data. Let's do a name. So well, we could just call it item data. Oops. And we'll pass that in to both. Okay. So now we need to essentially just call it. So if we go to our UI here, do we have functions in here? No, we don't. So we are going, we need to open up our character to see where we go through and add the item, which we do right here. So we want to have, instead of going directly to our widget, or sorry, our inventory widget, which we are doing, I think we're accessing it directly. Yes, we are. We're just causing a problem. We need to, actually, we might be able to just refresh. We don't have the update, but we do have the add item. So we can do add item. Let me break some of these nodes out. And we need to move this around. So let's delete this add item. Let's check true because we want to add it to ourself and plug it into true and then pass in item data just like so. 
So for the first initial item, we're going to have, well, obviously our ourselves. Let's actually disconnect the update. We're going to have to add that later. Compile and save, and we got to add a target here. And the target is the inventory. So that's obviously not going to work. So where we have the should add new item, we want to kind of get a pointer to our actual self inventory. So if we get, sorry, I'm kind of good with checking everything, the name. So the name's the same. Okay. So we can get the inventory and then we can get the inventory as well again, like so, and plug that up which might not actually be a bad idea, but I think it's going to be easier to kind of use the shop inventory as an interface instead. So we're going to have to eventually get that situated, but let's go ahead and save for now. Press play, pick up an item. And as we see, we picked it up and we have it right here. And again, close buttons aren't going to work. So out of curiosity, do items stack? No, they do not. So we need to add that, set up that update because that's what's going to be running. So let's go to shop inventory. Actually, better yet, let's just kind of start mimicking. So we need an update function. And update takes in the array of inventory items. Let's go to our shop inventory. Let's call update. Takes in an array of inventory items. If I can see and slide that over. The array of item data which that should be it correct. Yes, it is. In which case, we also have another Boolean, which I want to move above there to the first, and that's going to be a Boolean. And again, it's going to be the same name of add to self. Just like add item. So we perform a branch, and that should not be an array. Let's change that back to a single, like so. In which case, again, we do the exact, keep going back to the wrong tab, same thing. So we grab our shop inventory and the normal inventory. And we call update based upon which one we are accessing. And then we just link both items right back in. So let's go back to our third person character. And when we call update, we can call that directly from there. Plug it back into false. The add to self is going to be true and plug in the inventory items like so. Oops, there we go. So now we're linked to update as well. Uh, let's try and see if that works. So now we should be able to stack items. So one, two, three, press I. And we now have three items. So that works with our update as well. Pick up and whatever we need. Can't pick our gold, that's fine. And we're good to go. So now I want to fix this real quick for should add new item. So we're not, you know, doing back to our own personal inventory. Instead, I want to do it on the shop inventory. So we're going to mimic that real quick. And then I'm going to call it a day for the, well, I'm going to stop the video because we're getting a little bit long. So let's go to our should add new item. Now this function takes in, again, our current inventory and it handles everything else on its own. Let's create that function. Should add new item. Messed up the capital I. That's right. Yes, it is. And again, it takes in an array of item data. So let's see. We named it current inventory. And exactly the same thing again. Let's call. Let's grab that. Instead of calling update, we call should add new item. Plug in the current inventory, like so. And now the only thing we have to do is get that Boolean passed in as a parameter as well. So add to self. It's going to be a Boolean. It's not going to be an array. And we perform it on the branch. And then all we do is we want to return. So let's add a output. It's going to be a Boolean. And we name this one add new item. 
like so. And they're both linked together just like that. Oops, got to plug that in. And that should be good to go. Let's go back to our character again. Delete the should add new item. Delete that inventory and search for should add new item. Add it to the self, plug in the current inventory, plug in our branch, and we're good to go. So now we can clean this up just a little bit because obviously it's pretty ugly. And I think this is like the... Yeah, that's good enough so we can see where everything's running. Alrighty. Now let's try it. Make sure we stack items. Alrighty, we did not. Let's go back to... We're adding it to self. For some reason, we can only plug one into the return node. Let's see. That should add new... Well, yeah, we do kind of need that. Uh, can we add another return? Yeah, we can. Okay, so we have to just have two return nodes like so. Make sure that's still... Yep, that's still the same. And hit play. There we go. That's all working correctly. It's all stacking. So we know that that's working. So... Let's go ahead and save all, and that's going to be all for this video. In the next video, it's probably going to be a small one, but I simply want to have just a simple close button in here instead of having two close buttons that currently don't do anything. So that's what we're going to work on in the next one. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as your girly access to pretty much all my videos, such as this one. So, and another thing, if you have any questions or anything like that, Feel free to join my Discord, that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.